we are so fortunate the restraining order we have in effect right now seems to be doing the trick of keeping him away but it's just so scary to me the power of a manipulative abusive person it is so scary to me and such a sad horrifying terrifying thought that there's somebody out there in a relationship with somebody like this right now as we speak and there's somebody out there afraid to leave like my mom was. Haley Reese just shared an extremely powerful story about getting out of an abusive relationship, dealing with a stalker, managing your mental health. So in this video, we're gonna break it down and hopefully you'll get inspired too. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So I, up until this morning, had absolutely no clue who Haley Reese was. And it's funny too, because I turned to uh, Tristan, I'm like, hey, have you ever heard of Haley Reese? And she's like, nah. And then I go and check Haley Reese's channel and she has like a lot of like spooky stuff. And that's exactly what my uh, my girlfriend Tristan's into. So Tristan might go check out some Haley Reese. But anyways, her new video um, about her family stalker was recommended to me on Discord. So in Discord, we have a channel for video topic ideas and Zombie Pie actually recommended this video. So shout out to Zombie Pie for recommending this video. Um, I don't have a chance to make all the videos that you guys want me to make. I do watch a lot of the videos that you send me though, but this one was perfect because it actually tied into the mental health motivation email I sent out this morning. By the way, two things. If you're not in Discord, come in Discord. If you're in an abusive relationship or you're just struggling with mental health, come join our Discord. We have over a thousand people in there, a ton of support channels, like please come join us. But if you're not on my mental health mailing list, like join it, sign up, it's free. And I try to send these things out in the morning uh, a couple times a week. And this morning, this email was about, you know, even though like being mentally healthy is hard, it's not impossible. And I talk in that email about the difference between can't and won't, right? Because I really want you to feel empowered and understand what you can and can't do. Because once you start to realize that, like this is part of that internal locus of control I keep trying to teach you. And once you realize how many choices you actually have, like you become much more empowered. So real quick, before I jump into this video, I wanna throw out a big disclaimer. And I was actually thinking about doing a poll on this. So clearly, I am not a woman, okay? Um, and it's it's rough, it's rough for me to cover some of these topics because I don't have the experience of being a female who has been in an abusive relationship. And, and trust me, like, the only reason I do this is because my channel is about mental health, mental health awareness, and I want people to be talking about this more and learning and understanding. Like, I've worked in mental health treatment for over three years now, I've done hundreds hundreds of all women's groups and trust me it's the same thing in there and you know i usually get a pretty good response I, I actually haven't been hassled by women in any of those groups but i do get hassled on the internet sometimes the internet is just much more vicious but anyways i just want to throw that disclaimer out there but um this is why i suggest like a lot of uh you know my female audience i have a large female audience you go and you find women who inspire you and just in case my message isn't the right message okay it was a really terrifying time in my life but it really taught me what I would be willing to take from somebody in a relationship and where I draw the line as far as respect goes and as far as mutual understanding and just a a anything to do with relationships. It set a standard of this is what I will not tolerate and I I'm very thankful that I was able to interpret that from the experience that we went through. I wanted to start out with this clip. It's actually later in the video, but this is something that I can definitely relate to. So what Haley's talking about is seeing her mother, right? And her mother, like her mother sounds like a badass, okay? Like I am so inspired. Like my mom um, did something similar and had to leave her husband and like what Haley's talking about is how it, it helped her understand what she will 
and won't take or what she should and shouldn't take in a relationship, all right? Because I can definitely relate to that. I am one of those people, like some of you out there, where I dated at my self-esteem level. I have been in many abusive relationships, all right? Like Haley mentions in there, which I'm glad she did, like men can be in abusive relationships too. I've been in emotionally abusive relationships, verbally abusive relationships. I've even been in physically abusive relationships where I've been hit, had stuff thrown at me and all those things, but I didn't leave. So I can definitely relate to that. But, you know, when I started working on my mental health and most of all, my own self-love and self-compassion and learning what I do and don't deserve in a relationship, things got better. Like I stayed single for over a year and a half because I set a bar, I set a standard for myself. And I'm going to have a guest video soon from one of my friends about setting an ideals list. So, so you kind of have like a framework of what you will and won't tolerate. Like I waited a very long time staying single until I found Tristan and she marked off all the positive check marks on my box and that's why we've been together for two years. But until she came around, I was staying single because I knew what I wasn't going to tolerate. Like I think I mentioned this in one of my Jason Nash and Trisha Paytas videos the other day. Like if things are going terrible from the beginning, like if you go out on a first date with somebody, right? And things aren't that great or they like say something and it's kind of argumentative or something like, take that as a red flag. But I figured I would film a video talking about it because so many of you guys have asked for a part two to that. But also, I think it's really important and such an educational moment in general for anybody in a relationship with somebody who's abusive or manipulative or controlling or, or an alcoholic in this specific case. Not saying every alcoholic does these types of things, but it's really important to recognize the depths of people's attachments and how far some people are willing to go. This is so, so, so important. This is so important. Like we need to, we need to be more mindful. This is why I talk to you guys so much about practicing mindfulness because we need to be aware of what's happening, not only in our mind, but what's happening in our world, right? So I can relate to this in a sense that I was extremely lonely for a long time. Being alone, was just the worst emotional pain. Like, I hated being alone. And because I, I hated being alone, I would lower my standards. But what the problem is, is that when we're extremely lonely, and a lot of this comes from like childhood or past relationships, we want love, we want attention, right? So what happens is we might start dating somebody or talking to somebody and they, for example, they text us all day long. All day long they text us. So in our mind, we feel like they're good for us. Like, oh, they, they, they only think about me, they're always thinking about me, that's a good thing. But this is why you need other people to kind of give you input because there's a certain point where that might not be healthy. That might actually be a red flag. Do, and I, I hope that makes sense. If you're just meeting somebody and they're like, having like some obsessive tendencies towards you, that might be something that you need to look out for. So that's the video we're diving into today. I hope that you guys enjoy it and at the very least can hopefully learn something from it or warning signs or red flags or things to look out for when dating a personality like this. In this clip, like I wanted to show it because I think it's important that we talk about, you know, like victim blaming is a very tricky subject. So during the Shane Dawson and Jake Paul series, I made a video about Alyssa Violet and Tristan informed me that I was a little harsh in it. So I made a follow-up video talking about emotional abuse not being okay. So when it comes to victim blaming, like I love what Haley Reese said right there because there's, there's just things that we're trying to teach you and educate you on so you know what to look out for, all right? There's so many things that are not in our control, okay? There's so many things. So many of you watching this, you went through, you know, um, abusive childhoods or relationships and none of that, none of that was your fault. But as we move forward in our lives, we have to look back at those situations or learn from other people's situations and say, okay, Maybe there's warning signs that I need to look out for, all right? Because the more aware we are of what to look out for, we are minimizing the chance. So there's no way we're ever going to avoid every terrible situation ever. That is impossible, okay? But part of like minimizing our anxiety and feeling more empowered is knowing what to look out for. Something I've mentioned in other videos is that people with anxiety actually live longer because they're constantly 
worried about things. So like, you gotta find a balance so you're not like constantly having panic attacks. But if you're always like, okay, wait, is this person safe to be around? Um, what does this body language mean? Oh, is this, is this, right? Like anxious, cautious drivers get in far less accidents than other people. Now I'm not saying like freak out while you're driving because that will cause accidents, but I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. Like it's important to have uh, uh, a healthy fear in certain situations. So again, like, when Haley Reese is talking about this, when I'm talking about this, I hope you understand, this isn't a, a, a victim blaming mentality, but what we're trying to do is help you learn from either other people's situations or from situations you've had in the past. For example, from all the abusive relationships I've been in, like I said earlier in this video, I've learned what, what red flags to look out for when I started dating other women. It was a lot. And my poor mother was trapped in that cycle of a victim who is not only afraid to leave, but is manipulated into staying. Where she finally drew the line and left him was when he started getting really violent, when he would get drunk. And that became the point where it wasn't just about her anymore, it was about her kids, and she knew that for us, that she had to leave. Right there, right there is the epitome of what I'm talking about when it comes to can't versus won't, okay? And again, um, my email that I sent out this morning, I'm gonna link it down in the description and in the pinned comments. Please go check it out. So like I said, I have done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women's groups. Um, and I worked in a drug and alcohol treatment center. And a huge part of recovery is getting out of bad relationships. So just a real quick, real quick summarized story of my mom, who's been sober for 13 years. She tried to get sober multiple times when she was with my stepdad, but he refused to change. He refused to not have parties at the house. He refused to not have liquor in the house and all these other things. So my mom had to leave him, okay? So like whenever I hear somebody telling me, oh, I can't leave this person, I think about my mom, right? My mom was scared. She was scared out of her mind about leaving him because of financial reasons, security reasons, you know, so many things, like her children that she had to take care of. She was so worried about all of these things, but she knew, she knew that her mental health had to come first. So especially if you're a mother or if you're a father or whatever it is, like you need to understand the difference between can't versus won't. And I, this is another reason I think you should join the Discord server and get suggestions and advice from other people because sometimes we stay in the problem. Like for example, Tristan is, uh, she's actually in class right now. She is getting her degree in social work, which is to help people who are in bad situations, right? And like, there's so many resources that you might know, not know about. Like, I know here in Las Vegas, we have a bunch of women's shelters. We have like West Care, which helps women and children. Like, women can bring their kids to West Care to live with them. Like, it's amazing. So sometimes when you think you can't do something, like, you might just not be aware of the resources, but it's important to realize, like, you can do it, you're just afraid to do it, all right? And something I mentioned in that email is, yes, I know it's scary, but at least when you realize that, you know, you can do it, but you're just afraid, it empowers you just a little bit and you make a little bit of a step forward, all right? So listen to stories from people like Haley Reese. Listen to these stories about people, how people left an abusive relationship and use that as inspiration. Ah. Uh all I can say is I'm so thankful that she was able to come out the other side for the better and able to be a survivor of abuse. Well, you guys, that is it for today's story of my family's crazy stalker. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Never, ever, ever tolerate anybody treating you like you are less than because you are worthy of all the love and respect in the world and nobody should ever make you feel otherwise. This right here, this right here. So you're gonna get a little tough love, Chris. I know you love tough love, Chris. But like Haley Reese just explained why you share your story, okay? So I'm gonna touch on this in a couple different ways. I made a video a week or two ago that Ooh, it made people mad. It is still making people mad. I'm getting comments on it. I'm not gonna say which video it is. Some of you know what it is. But in that video, I called somebody selfish for not sharing their story. And people are livid. People are livid. And I reply to the comments just laughing like, why do we get so offended when, we're, when someone calls us selfish? Like, we are selfish, you guys. I have money in my bank account right now because I'm selfish. There's nothing wrong with that. 
There's nothing wrong with the fact that I haven't gone and emptied out my bank account and just made it rain on every homeless person in Las Vegas. That is selfish, okay? When I am eating food and not giving it away, I am being selfish. There are many things that we do that are selfish. The problem is, is that a lot of us refuse to acknowledge it. Like, I'm not saying, like, that being selfish is always a bad thing. I have to be selfish in order to take care of my mental health. I have to, I absolutely have to, but so many people get offended They're like, how dare you call this person selfish just because they feel uncomfortable doing that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, right. So um, I admitted this, I have an old video that I made um, about closet sobriety, I think. And basically what I do is, is that I, real, I realize and I acknowledge I am being selfish by not sharing my story, right? I am, I am more concerned about how it's going to embarrass me, how it's going to make people look at me. I'm more concerned about that than the fact that it might help the people who are hearing my message, all right? So I just wanna make that very clear. And that's what Haley Reese is talking about. So this is a way that I kind of trick my mind into helping me get out of social anxiety. So I've had a lot of people say that they're afraid to join the Discord server or afraid to join the Facebook group and all of this. And here's my advice to you. I was thinking about sending this out in an email in a few days, but like just realize that you opening up or you talking to people in there, you are helping other people, all right? So just always try to remember that because what helps me in my social anxiety is when I quit thinking about me and thinking about how I can help other people. So again, everybody's at a different place in their process. Not everybody is going to be Haley Reese. I did a video about Pixie Locks um, not that long ago, how she opened up about her self-harm relapse. Like, yeah, not everybody is in their, um, like a place in their recovery for them to share their story, but just at least acknowledge that it is selfish. And when you feel like growing out of that in that aspect of your life, give, give what you can away, which is your story, your inspiration, all right? That's why I share so much of my story on this channel because I hope to inspire you, okay? But anyways, let me know down in the comments below, um, if you have had any experience with previous abusive relationships and what you did to get out of them. Like, did you turn to family? Did you turn to friends? Did you turn to local resources? Like, let's turn the, the comment section into a resource center for anybody who is in an abusive relationship and wants to get out of it, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing, and again, there's a link down below to the email list. And don't forget, my book on anger management is coming out very soon, so stay tuned. All right, thanks again. I'll see you next time.